Inside is a puzzle platformer that tells the story of a young boy who ventures into a mysterious and haunting world. He goes through a series of puzzles and challenges to uncover the secrets of the world around him. It is one of the most engaging and mesmerizing games I have ever played and the universe it creates is one of the most captivating settings I have ever encountered in a game. Inside is a dark narrative driven platformer combining intense action with challenging puzzles. It has been critically acclaimed for its moody art style, ambient soundtrack and unsettling atmosphere. While I was playing it recently, I thought it would be a good idea to remake it in Unreal and share the result with you guys. I was sure it would be a very cool project to do, so I spent a week making an environment with a couple of puzzles and mechanics, and this is what I came up with. I combined a couple of scenarios of the game and designed a level in Unreal. Then I made some game mechanics including two enemies, a door and an elevator, and wrapped up the project. In this video, I break down my process and show you how I made this minigame. It's not a step-by-step -step tutorial, but it will give you an overview of the different parts of the project. So just sit back, relax, and enjoy the video. The first thing I had to do was to figure out what environment I'm aiming for and also what puzzles and mechanics I want to have in the level. There are a lot of different levels and environments in the game and also a lot of puzzles and mechanics. There are simple ones which are quite easy to remake and also complicated ones which may take a lot of time and also demand certain specialities to remake properly. Especially some of the animations and characters are really hard to get right. There are also a lot of different environments like jungles, farms, factories, alleys, sewers, water and etc. And I had to choose a couple of them and create them in Unreal. Some of the levels were quite hard to remake and some of them were easy to do so I decided to get the middle ground and make something compatible with my limited resources. I combined two different places together and made my own scenario. I wanted to have a dark and moody jungle with a human enemy and then after that I wanted to have a factory with a couple of robots which will shoot you when you are in their sight. I started the environment design process by blocking out the level and creating a very rough and simple model to get the overall feeling of the environment. I made a road with a couple of landscape models, some cylinders as my trees and a factory made of a couple of simple cubes. Then I imported the model into Unreal and moved around inside it to see how it would feel when you play a game inside this environment. After I played with the scale and proportions of the objects, I started adding some assets to bring the scene to life. I used Quixel assets and based on the image of the game I had in my mind, I scattered them around my scene. It's just some trees, rocks and foliage and also some pipes and pallets for the factory. After putting some objects in the environment and filling up the scene, I started playing with the lighting a little and after adding a fog and some post-process effects, this is what I came up with. What I achieved was not bad but still not good enough compared to what I had in my mind. I knew the environment needed more work but I decided to stop for a while and work on some technical stuff instead and then come back to the environment design with a fresh mind. So I started to set up my main character. I grabbed this character from Mixamo and then I did some edits on it in Blender. I tried to make it as close as possible to the main character in Inside. So I deleted his hat, his bag and his glasses and then changed the material of his clothes and made it red. That was it for the model and it was looking good enough so I imported it into Unreal and started the retargeting process. It's safe to say that it's not the most fun thing to do in the world and it can be quite annoying. It will act weird and can get on your nerves sometimes but there is no way around it so you have to do the job anyways and get on with it. After a couple of tries and messing around with the rigs and the settings I was finally able to get it right and go to the next stage. I also wanted to add a death animation to my character but then I decided to just go with simulating physics. It was acting cool using Ragdoll, so I kept this effect for his death event and didn't add a death animation to my blueprint. After setting up my character, I went back to the environment design stage and tried to make the environment look better. The first thing I didn't like about this environment was that it was looking realistic. The textures and models from Quixel have too much detail and they are supposed to be photorealistic. Therefore, they are not a good choice for the look I was trying to achieve, so I decided to replace them with some low-poly and stylized assets from Sketchfab. 
I found some rocks which were looking great for my project so I downloaded them and placed them in the level. I also didn't select the trees, they were looking quite bland so I found some trees with different shapes and added them to the scene to have more variation in my jungle. The next step was fixing the vegetation. I needed more variation so again using Sketchfab I was able to find everything I wanted. I filled the scene with my new assets and the result was much better than before. I also added some decals to make some leaves on the ground and fill up the scene even more. After a couple of hours spent on the environment and playing around with my new assets, I was happy with what I achieved and I was ready to go to the lighting stage. For the lighting, you can just start with a directional light, a skylight, a sky atmosphere and a height fog. After tweaking the settings and also playing with your post-process volume, you are able to reach a decent look and after that you can start fake lighting to make it look even better. Meaning that you can add multiple light actors to the scene regardless of the natural light sources in your environment. I used some rectangle lights, spotlights and point lights to make more emphasis on the actors I want and make the scene more contrasty and exciting. After I was done with the lighting, I color graded the scene and added some effects using my post-process volume and finished the environment design stage. Even if it's already looking great, after you finish your project, you can always come back to this stage and add your final touches before you wrap up the project. The next step was to make some mechanics for the game. I wanted to have an enemy here which will chase you and kill the character if you can get to him. I wanted a door here to be able to get rid of the enemy by shutting it in his face. Then I wanted to have some robots here which will shoot the character when he is in their sight. And for the last part, I wanted to have an elevator for the character to use and finish the game. The door and the elevator are just some simple blueprints, but the enemies can get a little tricky. This guy here needs an AI behavior tree to be able to think and decide based on the situation. The behavior tree has two main parts which is chasing the player when he sees him and shooting the player when he gets near enough. In order to make this functionality, you need a blueprint character, an AI behavior tree, a blackboard, an AI controller, an animation blueprint, and an animation montage. After some trial and error, I was able to set it up correctly and my enemy was ready. It has a pawn sensing component in the blueprint, so when he sees the character, it will activate the chasing action. Then there is a sphere trace, and if he can get to the player, the animation montage will be played and we will have the shooting action. For the last part, I connected my AI enemy to my third person character, so as soon as he plays the shooting animation, my character dies. And that is possible by using the physics simulation and ragdoll, which we talked about earlier. After I finished making the AI enemy, I made this simple door so our character can get away from him by shutting the door. It's a very simple setup and by just setting an input and making some rotation and timeline nodes, you are able to make this functionality. My next type of enemy was an automatic killing robot. This time I did not need to set up an AI system and using some blueprints, I was able to get what I wanted. First I made the rotation system which is possible by making some rotation and timeline nodes like the door. The only difference here is that it needs to go back and forth and make a loop so it's a little different and your nodes will look something like this but still it's a very easy and simple setup to create. Then I started working on the shooting system and I wanted to make it by using a box collision. It was working perfectly, but the problem was that it didn't care if there was something between the player and the robots, and it would get triggered regardless of what is between them. This way I couldn't hide behind the columns to avoid being shot. So I had to change my approach and use a line tracing system. It basically shoots lines from the start point and then sends back the data it has received on its way. It will understand if there is anything in the way or not and will act accordingly which is exactly what I wanted. So I used this system and was able to activate the death mechanism for my character as soon as a line hits him. Then I added a sound effect and also a particle effect and my killing robot was ready. The last thing I made was an elevator to finish the level. It's just a simple blueprint which is called by pressing E on the keyboard. Yeah, and that's it. 
this is what I was able to achieve in a very short period of time and I am quite happy with the result. I hope you enjoyed the video as well and if you are interested in some step by step tutorials about the different parts of the project, please let me know in the comments. And also don't forget to subscribe to the channel. Thank you guys for watching, see you soon.